What's happening, people? Dan Lawless here, back with another Transfer Daily, brought to you by Unibet. Please do check the link in the description down below. Check out, they've got some transfer blogs and stuff like that, all sorts of stories and blogs and things on the latest transfer news, so it will help us out a great deal. Really support the channel if you just go in the description and click the link and have a look. That's all you've got to do, so uh, really appreciate it, guys. But it looks like we have announced, finally announced, officially announced the signing of 18-year-old centre-back. Let's see if I can pronounce this name correctly, right? Goncalo Cardoso, I think. Anyone who's a bit more... Uh, a bit more savvy on their uh, Portuguese, then uh, correct me in the description down below. But yeah, 18-year-old centre-back from Boa Vista, made 15 appearances last season, Portugal uh, under-23s international, under-21 international, I believe. And uh, £2.7 million. So it's I think it could be a turn out to be a decent deal. Look, I've never ever ever heard of the bloke. I'm not gonna even pretend like I know that whether we've signed just an absolute gem or, or not, or you know, he's gonna be one of the best centre backs going. But yeah, I trust to Silos, I trust Pellegrini. Obviously we signed uh, Balbuena for four million last season. So it's a good age and this could be a real gem and it could be something we need and um maybe uh, looking for, I mean, it seems from what I've been reading, he's highly regarded as as one of the sort of brightest young prospects uh, in European football. So that sounds positive. But yeah, maybe I'm hoping that his this is the sort of centre back we need that can um, really adapt and really play towards Pellegrini's style. Because like I said before, I've been worried about this high line type of thing that we play, and we seem to get caught out quite well. So maybe quite well, quite a lot. So maybe having like a, a, this young, energetic centre-back, maybe he's the type of player that can get back quickly and, and close players down easier. He's left-footed. Um, yeah, and I think it's, you know, it's one of them signings. It's not, it's not one of these big-name signings, but this could be one of them ones that we end up looking back on for years to come and... Um, really being impressed with the business that we've done there time will only tell on that time will only tell but what i do like is the fact that this summer it's, it's all about youth we're really building a nice young squad for the future and less of these of sort of older players that are just you know big reputations that we've been linked with before you know the 31 32 year olds that are coming from big clubs there's a, a lot less of that and none of that this season so um yeah it's 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 positive it's positive i mean we just have to see what else we do over the next few days there's it's rumors linking us to strikers and all sorts of players going on there was that aaron long uh the american uh center back i believe it was center back from america that probably don't look like a sat now i think they wanted like 15 million for him so that looks like that's going to be off the cards if we've signed this this player um but yeah so it's just a case of will we get a striker in I think we need to. I do think we need to because touch wood, if anything happens to Alaire, we're stuck with Hernandez. Yes, Antonio can play as a center, as a as a striker, but I don't really want to rely on him because if anything happens to one of our wingers, say you know Yarmolenko or something gets injured or anything, you just don't want to be caught in a situation where you're having to juggle all of these. But like we've seen in the past, you're having to move all these players into all these different positions just to make it work. Um, we we do want good squad depth. I'd love to have a good cup run this this um, season. You know, I really would. I really would love to have a good cup run. And for that, you need squad depth. Especially, you know, as you start to get towards that winter period, when it gets over January and December and all of that, the games are just savage. You know, they come thick and fast. So having a strong um, bench and a strong squad is vital obviously Adrian was announced as a Liverpool player now I sort of started some crazy uh, debate with just tons of people and you know Dom was involved Baz was involved a lot of a lot of you guys got involved and it was interesting about Adrian and whether we should have kept him really divisive I didn't realize that Adrian was so divisive as he was um, he's a keeper I thought he was a very decent keeper for us he had these shaky moments uh, in a West Ham shirt, he used to like to take risks from time to time, but overall, I think he'd go down if you if you judged him from the first 
from his first day till his last day, on average, I think he's a very decent keeper. He's definitely far from one of our worst keepers. I thought he was a good one. Um, but yeah, a lot of a lot of um, fans just I don't know don't rate him for some reason. You know, like I said, Fabianski, we've we've definitely improved there. Let's let's you know not make any bones about it. Fabianski is definitely an improvement, but for where we were at the time and what West Ham was, he definitely done the job. And this is what I, I said. I said I was saying that we should have kept him. I don't think he would have took much convincing to stay as he was our cup keeper. He, you know, he was guaranteed to play in the in the cups in the in the Carabao's and the FA Cups. He was guaranteed games. And then if anything happened like you've got Fabianski seems to be injured now and it's touch and go whether he's going to be fit for Man City. We've got him there. Now, people are talking about he's on 40 grand a week and we've signed uh, Roberto and Martin for a lot less. However, we've saved like over 200 grand a week on the transfer, on the, on the wage budget, right? So 40 grand a week in that is nothing. If you, you know, if you kept him on the books, we've still got 160 grand a week less, right? Look at next year. We're going to have, probably have Hernandez and Zabletta off the books. That's over 200 grand a week on top right there. So I think we could have afforded, right, to pay out, say, what, Martin and Roberto's wages probably come to like 25, 30 grand a week. So say it's like an extra 15 grand, extra 10 grand a week wages to have a, a keeper that knows the club, loves the club, and can do a, a very decent job over these two uh, keepers that are very unknown quantities. I mean, look, Roberto can still could still come good. Still, he hasn't impressed in preseason. He could go on. He could be a decent keeper. I mean, the thing is, when we've signed him, he's like 32 or whatever. So, I don't think in terms of development. But you know, he might get to you know the Premier League. I just feel like, you know, he's gone to Liverpool now, Adrian, to be their number two. I don't think they particularly utilise a, a cup keeper. I don't know if he'll get much game time there. I think we could have convinced him to say really he was settled. He loved the club. He could have said, "Look, let's um, extend it for another year. Let's just see how we go." But we haven't, you know. So time moves on. Um, I, but again, I just feel like you need people are saying you can't afford to pay a keeper that much money to be on the bench. I think again, you just a strong squad is vital if we are going to have a good cut run. I want to see us win a trophy. I want to see us win a trophy in my lifetime. So, and I just think we need a good squad. squad. So, anyway, um, let me know what you guys think. Striker wise, I don't know what we're going to I think it's going to be a loan signing. Some people are hinting that we've still got a big signing left in us. I think we'll get a loan signing, and yeah, I'll be happy with that. I mean, we've got, so we've, we've got a pretty decent squad. So, I don't think it'd be the end of the world if the window closed now and we, we had what we had. We just have to manage our injuries, we have to keep these players fit. We just have to. Um, so, yeah, we'll see what happens. I'm just, I am just want to get it all started. I want that window to shut. I'm sort of sick of the transfers window now. I want to get it shut and move on. So, anyway, let me know all your comments down below. Do check out my other channel, Dan Damo J. Put a link down below. We've got a brand new podcast out where we're talking about esports. And are esports, does esports take as much commitment as regular sports? So, we had a good debate about what Spencer Owen said about esports taking as much commitment as football and boxing to do and all of that very controversial check out what we had to say down below so thank you guys so much for watching and uh, look out for all the other stuff we've got coming up lots of stuff coming up we've got Ryan's interview with Carl and Cole and Paul Koncheski we've got our season predictions going out tomorrow and all sorts of good stuff so one thing left to say come on you irons